Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we're taking a much deeper dive into the special tools investigation. In fact, we're looking at the custom STEM tool, which is definitely kind of advanced. And uh, incidentally, the custom STEM tool is the only place in Finale that we can actually deal with forked stems. So stick around towards the end of the video. I'm going to show you how to do forked stems specifically with the custom STEM tool. But the custom STEM tool can be used for other things, not just um, forked stems. Uh, in the special tools palette, it's the one towards the middle. It actually looks like forked stems, but it's called the custom stem tool. And we're just going to select that. And I'm going to scroll over to later in this file and zoom in because uh, we have some scenarios where this uh, these custom stem tools might be used, including these augmented seconds where you kind of have to use forked stems. Well, I guess you don't have to, but it's normally done with forked stems. Um, obviously, I would you know, prefer to do D E flat here, but uh, sometimes you run into these scenarios that you can't avoid, so you have to uh, rely on um, these augmented unisons. But anyway, let's start with just custom stems in general, and I'll show you how to use the tool. First of all, just like with any other special tools, you have to click in the measure to get the handles on, on all the stems, and you'll see them at the base of the stem. They might be hard to see, but there, there they are. These handles can't be right-clicked. Um, there's no contextual menu with these handles, and if you have the uh, default stem here, these handles cannot be moved anywhere. So you really can't do anything with these handles except double-click it, which brings up the shape selection dialog box, or if you press return or enter, uh, you'll get to the same uh, shape selection dialog box. Now the principle here is rather uh, novel. Um, basically you're just replacing the default stem with a custom shape. And Finale of course comes with a series of custom shapes. You can see them in this window here. But none of these shapes are really useful as stems. I can just select this first one and you'll see what happens. I mean that's you know not really a useful stem. Um, Maybe I'll choose the tab uh, sign here, and you'll see that that doesn't really make a lot of sense either. In fact, all of these shapes really won't do anything for you as far as you know stems are concerned. A lot of these are pretty small, and they won't really do much anyway. So essentially, we're going to have to create our own stems, uh, and uh, we're going to have to do that by creating a new shape, which brings us to the shape designer. Dun, dun, dun. And from here, it's rather simple. We just have to <laughs> create the shape of our stem. And I'm gonna give you a few pointers before we even start. The one thing that I would start with is look in your uh, document options under the stem section and just check out what your stem line thickness is because uh, if you're creating custom stems, it's probably a good idea to match this line thickness in the shape designer. So I'm just gonna take this value here and copy it. Uh, and I'm gonna go back to uh, shape selection, create, and what I'm going to do is go into the shape designer and under line thickness, uh, we're going to go find other, and then this will be the line thickness for any line that you create in the shape designer, and I'm just going to paste that value here. It's a little bit thinner than what uh, the default setting was, and click OK. Now, really the only reason to do this is to just match the, the stem thickness here to whatever shape that you're about to create. The second piece of advice I'm going to give you is to go into the Shape Designer menu, choose Show, and choose Staff Template. This is just going to give you a reference so you know how big your stem is relative to the staff. Uh, let's actually zoom into 200% here, just make it a little bit easier. Uh, so, so you know how long to make your stems, etc. And then the third piece of advice is that you really have to pay attention to this origin point, which is this little circle, um, which happens to be at the top of the staff right here. This is where the stem is going to generate from. So where the stem connects to the note head, uh, even though it's all the way up here and this note is all the way down here, you have to uh, uh, use this origin point in order to make uh, your stem. So what I'm going to do is I got a bunch of tools up here. I'm just going to choose the line tool for now and try and get it right at zero, zero over here. And that's going to be where I'm going to start. I'm going to click and drag. And I'm just going to you know, create something silly here. I'm going to create a diagonal stem just like that. We can add another shape if we want. Maybe we'll do a rectangle, just something silly like that. Uh, we can even do um, text if we want. So I'm just going to add like a capital B there or something. So we get this crazy looking stem. And you can move these things around uh, with the pointer tool, just like that. And basically what I've done is I've created a custom shape that looks just like that. And this origin point is where the stem is going to generate from. So we click OK, and you'll see that I have my custom shape there, and we press Select. And what you'll see is this um, custom shape stem. 
that appeared, right? So that's basically how you do it. Now, a couple things to realize here is that once the stem is here, this is a this is a shape. So this shape is non, uh, you can't extend this shape. Like I couldn't extend this. I can't really do much with this shape. You can move this relative to the note. Um, and in fact, with the custom stem tool, now you can actually move this handle. You can't move the handle if you're using a default stem, but you can if you've already selected a custom stem. So that's one way you can kind of make uh, minute adjustments uh, to this particular uh, to this particular stem. But it is fixed. You can't you know you can't change the angle. You can't edit the the shape within the score. You have to go back into the shape designer. And what's nice is that once you have this custom shape as the stem, pressing return or double clicking here will take you directly to the shape designer. It will skip over that shape selection dialog box so you can make the edits directly to the stem. So maybe we can move this box up a little bit more. We can adjust the B a little bit, get it closer to the end of the stem or something. And then you can click OK and you can kind of see how you can adjust that stem as needed. Now, one other thing to realize is that this stem now only applies in this particular direction. So if you were to actually flip this stem direction, which you can still do um, by cho you know, choosing the stem direction tool, um, we can choose it to go down and you can see that now we have the default stem. And in fact, if you go back to the, uh, the custom stem tool, the same thing happens. You can't adjust that stem or anything. This is just a normal custom stem, uh, sorry, a normal default stem. Uh, if we flip it back, we'll be able to get that custom stem back. So in order to get the downward version of this, uh, we actually have to make sure that that stem is going downwards and then uh, choose this. And then we have to make another shape. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to duplicate this shape and I'm going to edit it and we're going to make some changes. And I don't even need to see the staff here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this actually like that. We're going to kind of change the angle going the other way. Bear with me a little bit here. I'm going to move this box down to there and we're going to move the B down to there. So we're kind of flipping the uh, the stem a little bit. Let's move that down there. All right. And click OK. And so now we have sort of the reverse of that. And now you can see that I've got the flipped version of that crazy custom stem, which by the way, means absolutely nothing. I'm just putting stuff on a page here. And uh, so yeah, so now when you go in here, you can flip it back and you'll be able to get both uh, the upwards version and the downwards version of that custom stem. Incidentally, uh, with the custom stem tool, uh, if you have a custom stem selection here, um, if you select this the, uh, the handle there and press delete, it will return to the default stem. Um, however, it will uh, you know only return that in the uh, direction that you have it. So if you go back to the downwards uh, version, it's still there. Um, so just FYI, that's how that works. Now, one other thing to realize is that custom stems will also remove the flag. So if I were to try and do that here on this eighth note, use that custom stem, you'll see that you're not getting this custom stem with the flag. You're just getting the custom stem. It replaces the stem and the flag as well. So if you wanted to have an eighth note version of this, what you have to do is create yet another version of the stem. We'll just duplicate, edit, and then we're going to have to add the actual flag. Now, if you're using version 27 and you're using the Smoothful fonts, there is an issue because with the um, the text tool here, there's no way to do a insert character in the shape designer, which is really kind of a bummer. Um, I'm not sure why that function is not doesn't exist here, but it's impossible to do that. So I'm going to show you kind of just you know how you'd have to do this with the Smoothful fonts. You go into Shape Designer first of all, make sure that you select the font that you need, not Times New Roman. We're going to need um, Finale Maestro. Uh, EF, there we go. Where is it? Finale Maestro. Make sure it's 24 because that's the normal size for uh, music fonts in Finale, and click OK, and then. It, this is where it gets kind of wonky. You have to be able to um, type hex codes. And in on a Mac, you have to do this whole thing where you're adding Unicode hex input. I, I think I talked about this in one of the t uh, version 27 videos. But once you have this set up, um, you can uh, get a cursor here. And the code for the uh, downward facing flag is E240. So hold down option E240 and you'll get that flag. And then with the uh, pointer tool, you can adjust that as needed. 
Um, maybe put it like that. I don't know. Or, yeah, we'll try that. See what that looks like. And so now you have your crazy custom stem with the, the eighth note flag. And of course, you need to do that for the upside down version. It's a different hex code for the uh, the, the flipped version of the uh, eighth flag. So, you know, it, it does get a little bit crazy. Incidentally, if you're not using Smewful fonts, the normal way to type um, this particular flag is just lowercase j in the normal Maestro non Smewful font. Um, so that's how you would do that. And then with beams, you, you, you know, the same kind of issue appears. So if I were to try and do this stem here, and you know the same thing here with this custom shape you'll see that the beams are not going to follow the, the the sides of the beams are going to line up with where the original stems are supposed to be so if you do end up doing something crazy like this you know now you're going to have to deal with things like um, uh, changing the changing where the beam is with the beam angle tool we can raise it up with the beam extension tool we can you know extend this one this way and extend this this way to get something crazy like that so there is a lot of um, kind of manipulation that needs to happen uh, when you're dealing with these uh, custom stems including things like this and you know it's really the only way uh, to get the situation to work again I, not that you would need to do something as crazy as this but um, when you start getting into things like this then you, you're going to have to start making some micro adjustments like that and once again, all of this is fixed. So if I go in here and flip these stems, you know, boom, it all gets erased. So uh, just be aware of, of that. And the last thing I want to mention here is that, you know, uh, these custom stems are, are not unlinkable. So whatever you do in the score, this is going to appear in the part. And uh, there's no way to make like a different custom stem in the score versus the part. This is it's just the way it is. You can't you can't unlink custom stems in Finale. All right. So let's take a look at forked stems, which is, you know, the probably the most um, obvious thing that you'd want to do with the custom stem tool. So we're going to take these um, uh, augmented unisons here and create some forked stems. And the principle is the same, except we do have to start in a different way. The first thing we really need to do is we actually need to separate these notes. Um, and the way to do that is with the note head position tool. And I'm just going to go in here and try and find this uh, D sharp and separate it out to here. And then we also have to change the, the position of the accidental. So we'll go into the accidental mover tool, move the sharp over here. Maybe that note has, doesn't need to be that far. We can kind of squeeze that in a little bit more, get that a little closer. And we have to change the natural. All right, so now basically we have um, this stem. We just need the, the extra part of it here, right? So we're going to have to create a custom stem to do this. Custom stem tool. Select the handle, press return, and we're going to create a new one. Once again, let's uh, show our staff template so we have an idea of how tall this is going to be. And we probably want something in this case, you know what, we're probably going to want something that's a little bit longer. So let's actually create a line that's the whole length of, or the whole width of the staff, or the whole height of the staff rather. And actually what I can do is just go downwards first so I can get the height exactly right, and then just move it so it's the origins in the right place, right? Because we want this to go upwards from the origin. So even though it looks like it's in the wrong place, it's actually in the right place, right? So that's going to be the left side of the stem, and then we're going to want something to come off of it to the down to the right. So this is where you have to do a little bit of guesswork because there's you can't see these notes within the shape designer. There's, there's just no way to do that. So we're just going to have to take this um, line here and just go on faith that it's going to be something along those lines somewhere around there maybe that's a little bit too low and we can extend that just a little bit there again it's just complete guesswork i have no idea if this is going to be right but we're going to go with that to start and see how we did select and actually it's not too bad my guesswork was not totally totally bad um stems a little bit far away from the d natural so we can do a couple things here. We're going to go back here and move this just a little bit to the left. Move this one needed to go a little bit out to the right because these forked stems you usually want to go to the uh, right side over here. So we'll take this line and kind of extend it out a little bit that way and see how we do. Close, it's just a little bit long on the right side. One more time, let's just take this and actually got to go a little bit 
there. Again, it just takes a lot of like, you know, guesswork a little bit sometimes with these things. Ooh. And we can also, you know, if, if we're getting a little crazy with this, we can also adjust and readjust the note head to make it look good there. So we can do something like that. You know, you get the idea. This this is it's tedious work to do this, but again, this is really the only way to do these forked stems. I could probably probably could have designed that a little bit better, but that's that's kind of the idea. And once again, you know, this will not work with flags. So if you needed a flagged version of this, let's say that this is an eighth note. Um, again, we just have to edit this. Uh, custom stem, edit this to add that flag, and I believe that we should have the Finale Maestro font set up already. So again, it's option E240. And just go ahead here. And now we're probably going to have to extend that first line so that it goes upwards. Something like that. Something like that. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. So, you know, there you go. That's the idea. That's kind of the only way to do forked stems in Finale. It's a huge, huge pain in the neck, but um, this is really the only way to do it with the custom stem tool. Um, <laughs> it would be wonderful if there was sort of a, a more uh, native way to do this in Finale, but unfortunately, this is the only way to do it. And as you can see, you do have to be careful with these things, particularly when you're doing micro adjustments with like beams and stuff like this. You can see how everything got adjusted. That's because the, the widths keep changing as I move the... Um, you know, the notes around. So if I were to add more notes to the system, this would get sh more um, shrunken and then you, this bar would be too long. So this is like the kind of thing that you almost have to do last in your workflow to make sure that these uh, little adjustments um, are going to stay put exactly the way you need them to. So yeah, so that's the crazy custom stem tool in Finale. Um, like I said, it's the only way to do forked stems. It's, uh, you know, it's kind of tricky to use, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, come back for the next lesson, which is going to be on the beam angle and the reverse stem tools, which I think uh, makes sense to do in coordination because with both of those tools, we can get the whole reversed beam situation where, you know, one note's higher than the other notes and you can get the beam sort of in the middle of those notes. Um, that's, that's how we're going to do that with those two tools in particular. So uh, come back for that and we'll uh, learn a lot there. So once again, uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon on the next video.